You'll find that life is still worthwhile If you'll just smile Hello, my name is Linda Ellerby and I'm here to tell you about a fellow who has things to say that we, all of us, need to hear. His name is Byron Neese. Byron knows that no human being is a statistic, that you must be the lead player in your life. And, pay attention here, you must never make your decisions based on fear. Here, for instance, is a short snippet of the message he's given successfully to dozens of corporations. Though our life experiences may vary somewhat, more often than not, they're more alike than they are different. One day, I might need to be a nobleman called Raoul on the top of the Paris rooftop, and the next day, play Sir Lancelot being knighted at the round table. Many people have to change jobs a few times in a career. Actors have to do it every day. Audition after audition after audition. How in the world is that possible? It's invention and reinvention. Invention and reinvention. In the early days of my career, unemployment was a chronic condition. I'll never forget the first time I sang on the stage at Carnegie Hall. It was unbelievable. It was a thrilling Saturday night and I finally felt like I had reached what seemed to me to be my destiny. I walked out onto the stage with the New York Philharmonic, about a 200-voice choir. It was the kind of night that dreams are made of. Mind you, Monday morning I was back cleaning apartments, scrubbing someone else's toilet. I did what I had to do. I could not afford my rather formidable pride. How on earth is that possible? Again, it's invention and reinvention. Invention and reinvention. And this is what I would submit, is where your lives and mine are alike. And most importantly, where we can learn from each other. On a personal level, eight shows a week, I might have to sing the sweetest love songs imaginable, even if every day in real life I'm carrying the scars of an abusive childhood, the loss of siblings, the pain of estrangement from family, and some rather formidable health burdens. All of the kinds of things that we all have to carry. When I was 13, I rode my bicycle to the Glendale Police Department. I showed them the bruises on my body and I asked to be removed from the home of a rather violent and volatile mother and taken to the safety of my father. Even then, I knew that I had to do it for myself. If you smile through your fear and sorrow, smile. And maybe tomorrow you'll find that life is so worthwhile. Those words were penned by Charlie Chaplin at one of the deepest moments of his despair. Blackballed by his fellow performers, he had to leave the country that he loved so well. Like Charlie Chaplin, we all have demons of our past, concerns for our present, and projected fears for our futures. Are we, are you, determined to improve the quality of our lives, to take what's up to bat and make it better. So when you get socked by adversity, you can't go on with just the same old soldiering on. We're talking about full throttle invention and reinvention. A new creative dynamic way to bring to life the kind of experience that we now need to create. See, we all feel better when we are participating in a solution. 
forgiving and forgetting may not be possible. But forgiving, remembering, and moving on certainly is. So let me ask you, what are your dreams, your goals, and your desires? What stops you? What propels you? Forgiving yourself for past mistakes might be a great place to start because solutions like happiness begin with gratitude. In theater, people always know when you're acting as opposed to just being. It's all about authenticity. And so today, I challenge you to look at what works and does not work in your lives. Identify those things and ask yourselves, what is it that I can do to change that? Ask yourselves how you can be more effective. Where does your accountability lie? What would you like your world to look like? And how can you reorient your thinking to make that happen? So then share that with your families and your colleagues, all of it, all of who you are. We are bigger than our fears. We are bigger than our past mistakes. My great friend Linda Ellerby once told Maria Shriver, celebrate the struggle. Celebrate the struggle. I admit, it took me a while to wrap my mind around that one. But behind the struggle, there is always a gift waiting. I've spent much of my life in theater where we measure time in terms of runs. For instance, when I was hired to play Raoul, the romantic lead in Phantom of the Opera, I was given a run of five years. And back in 1983, when I was diagnosed with a medical problem, I was given a run of two years. That is a lifespan of two years tops. So since the miracle of medical magic has become my new reality, I had to learn how to reorient my thinking. If we are going to learn to work longer as we grow older, we also need to grow in understanding. We need to come to terms with what it means to invent and reinvent. Now that there are changing perspectives, higher levels of consciousness and possibility thinking, surely we are needed, we are called to reassemble something as fragile as community. I thank you for letting me be here with you this evening. At, uh, at the end, when the lights come up, I'll be back in the lobby to speak with you and answer any questions that you have. It's been a pleasure to be here with you. I hope to see you again. Thank you very much. Good evening. From Broadway to Carnegie Hall to the Hollywood Bowl to the White House, Byron has been able to get his message across to a variety of audiences. He can do this through words alone or through music or through the combination of music and words. And when he puts them together, be ready to cry, to laugh, and to come away feeling stronger, saner, happier, and in every way more alive. It's a gift. He's a gift. I urge you to give the gift of Byron Neese to your audience. And just what is that gift? Call it joy. I do. That's the time you must keep on trying. Smile. What's the use of crying? You'll find that life is still worthwhile.